welcome to another edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. Today, we are gonna talk about the old Apache Trail and uh, a lot of stuff that happens or happened right along that road, including a movie being made with a big pagoda and all sorts of things. So let's get at it. We're uh, gonna be talking with Larry Hedrick about all these things and I'm excited to get started. So let's get started with another edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. Here's Larry, Larry Hedrick. <laughs> Larry, tell us, uh, little bit about what we have behind us here. Well, uh, in June of 1959, a friend of mine were going up to Apache Lake and we got down here about 500 yards from here and a three quarter ton army truck went across the highway and down this road. And when we got up here, I looked up and here was this giant Chinese pagoda. I don't know what else to call it. Uh, setting up on top of this hill and people were moving up in that direction that looked like refugees from World War II. <laughs> and uh, I, knew, I knew it had to be a film. And, but we didn't actually go up to there. We t I wanted to follow that army truck. We'll, we'll go follow that road there in a yeah. bit here. Anyway, the, I have seen this movie two or three times and, and was actually there for a, one day of the filming. And um, the premise of the story was... Now, was, did we mention the movie? It's a mountain road, Mountain right? road, mountain which road. is a takeoff of Burma Road. And James Sturt and Harry Morgan were two of the main stars with Lisa Liu and several guys that you've seen in a million movies. The faces. Is, yeah, you might not remember their names. And uh, they were in a demolition crew. They had just blown up uh, the buildings on an airstrip, a dirt field, and they blew the field up with pockmarks so it couldn't be used. And now they were going down Burma Road to blow up bridges to slow the Japanese down. And there were hundreds of, of Chinese refugees walking these roads. And the, the, the main aspect or the main part of that is right here at Fish Creek Hill, isn't it? Uh, down, they down didn't, have, yeah. They, they, a lot they, of it right there. They disguised the bridge to look like a Japanese bridge, but they actually built another bridge and blew it up. Someplace. Okay, hope so. Yeah. <laughs> but that features very predominantly the road there. You, you, if you've been down that, that mountain road there, so to speak, you can't miss it. That's what that is. It's oh, yeah. the, down on the way to Apache Lake. Yeah, and they filmed right there at uh, Fish Creek Bridge. Too. Wow, that's amazing. We're going to head on up there and we're matching shots. I think uh, we got some shots of it, matching it up with uh, when the pagoda was up there. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll, we'll insert that so people can see that. Sure. And then we'll go down and take a look where the village was. Right. And uh, I think, why don't we head on up there and Let's take a look? It. All right. <laughs> Well, Larry, we are now up here at the top of the hill where the monastery was, or the pagoda for Mountain Road. And we're gonna show a little bit of uh, some of the foundation stuff that's still here to this day, mm -hmm. and a field of rebar <laughs> all around us where they you know, made sure that everything was tied down or tacked down. And this was 1959. Right, June. Jimmy Stewart. And, uh, this is amazing. It's amazing being up here. And I had heard that they had, you know, they had to take everything down. By law, they had to take everything right. down. But getting some of this would have been a little bit more difficult. It kind of blends in. Right. But you have to know what to look for. And I know a lot of people have come up here and, and seen the, uh, the wall and uh, th that's right there. And it does look like it could be some ruins. Um, and it fools them. But that's basically something that was left over from Mountain Road. Yeah, it, it was uh, a huge building. And the only scene that I know they shot in it from watching the movies is when Sturt came up here to get permission from the Chinese uh, ranking officer to blow up a bridge. And that was the only scene that was done in it. So it was more or less a facade up here. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in it, I right. mean, to shoot. So it was all a facade. So that makes sense. But this is just amazing. This is something that I, I've heard about for the last 35, 40 years, or a hundred or so, who knows? And, you know, I've wanted to see it, and I thought it was a lot farther off uh, old, uh, the old Apache Trail, but it's not. Well, no, where the village was is about half a mile. we are now here where the Chinese village was for Mountain Road and you just told me this great story and I'm gonna have you repeat it again for the people <laughs> watching so tell us all about your time down here at the village well when we uh, when that army truck came down this dirt road uh, I decided to, to follow it 
there was a rope across the road and a couple of poles and a chair. So, you know, I, I knew that there was filming going on someplace because of that pagoda. It couldn't have been anything else. And, but nobody was sitting there in that chair. So we just drove in. And when we got down here to this road, I could see that there were two chrome uh, Airstream trailers parked behind this, this village. And the village was L-shaped like this. And at the corner, it was a two-story part. And uh, when we drove in, I didn't drive in like we owned the place, you know. I, 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 drove, I put my sergeant stripes in and I drove in like I didn't care who owned the place. <laughs> And I want to repeat, we were dressed Western. I had cowboy, we had cowboy hats, cowboy boots, blue jeans, and a pistol. We're totally Western. So I drove around behind the building where the Airstreams were. And there was James Dirt's name on one of them. And the other one was Lisa Lou. And I got out, we parked about four feet from it. I got out and went and knocked on the door. Nobody came out. You, you knocked and on the, the Stewart's door. Stewart's door? I was going to meet Stewart. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, about that time, uh, a little box truck came in and came in and parked behind the, from here, parked behind the village, right behind one of the airstreams, and opened up the doors and started passing out box lunches and stuff. Then I realized when we were up at the pagoda, everybody was heading up to the pagoda. They must have been up there feeding people. Then they come down here and fed them. And I told my buddy, I said, uh, let's go get something to eat. He says, you're going to get us in trouble. I said, nah, hey, man, I worked at Disneyland. Uh, I, they're used to this. There was filming going on all the time. They don't, they don't care what genre is involved. So we got in line, and this little kid come up, a little Chinese kid all dressed up as a refugee, and he says, where are you making your film, mister? I said, oh, we're just over the hill. Get away, kid. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they gave us the lunches, never said a thing. They gave us the ice cream. We went over on the end, gave the pickup, and ate it, and then put the stuff in a garbage can. And I said, well, let's go see where, what they're doing up at the cameras, because when we come in, nobody was up here. I think they were all in the building, the main stars and the director and stuff, having their lunch inside mm. the building. Okay. So... By the time we ate and walked back around here, there were several people up here at the cameras, so we just moseyed around, got in behind him. I told my buddy, just don't say a word if they start shooting. Just don't say nothing. And uh, Now, you for, said there was a wall right here. There was a small wall right where this cutout is. And uh, uh, three guys come running out of the building. And, and I, I want to say what happened, what this was about was some Chinese des army deserters had ambushed the deuce and a half truck and killed two of our guys, maybe three, I can't remember which it was. And the truck was parked here, and that's why they were, Sturt and the rest of them came in, was to catch up with these guys. Mm -hmm. So they were in there, they saw them, and uh, they started backing out, and then they started running. They went over where the deuce and a half was, was pointing that way, and used it for concealment. And a big firefight took out a place as all the Chinese soldiers come out. It must have been about a dozen of them. And um, there were three or four guys here behind this wall giving supporting fire. And Sturt and Morgan and the Chinese officer came running up and exited on the right of the cameras and came in around behind where we were standing. But these guys kept the firefight up and uh, were shooting down these fellas. And um, I was so engrossed in that, I didn't realize that there was quite a few people standing behind the cameras with us at that time. And when they called cut, I turned and looked, and there was Harry Morgan standing right where you are. <laughs> and he was looking at my gun. And he says, may I see your gun? And I handed it to him butt first, and I said, it's loaded. And he took it off of safety and put it back on to assure himself it truly was on safety. And then he started twirling our pistol. And uh, he, he was doing a fantastic job of twirling. And then he handed it to Sturt. And Sturt, he said, it's got good balance. And Sturt was twirling it and all that and handed it back. And um, uh, over here where the soldiers were supporting fire behind this small wall, uh, all of a sudden uh, a drum oil drum started rolling down the hill and uh, it went right past the front of the deuce and a half and hit the wall of, of the building and uh, some guy said well that's perfect they were just testing for the next shot and I walked over and looked behind the wall and 
there were ore cart tracks. And the drum was fit down inside the tracks, not up on top of them. And you could tell by the sound it had to be full of something uh, because it, it didn't make the tinny noise that you would expect. Mm -hmm. And it didn't bounce. It just rolled perfect right where they wanted it. And at that point, um, uh, Sturt said, where are you boys from? They realized that we weren't making a movie <laughs> anywhere. And we said, Mesa, and they, they asked a few questions. And he said, so how'd you guys get in here? I said, well, there wasn't anybody up at the gate. He must have been out to lunch, so we just drove in. He didn't say nothing. They just, they just accepted us. While they were twirling the pistols, all these guys had turned around and looked at them doing it for a little bit. So I guess they thought we knew them. <laughs> I don't know, but nobody said a word to us. They just let us be. Well, you're dressed like a uh, cowboy. Oh, so total you, cowboy. You look at Stuart, Morgan did his share they're, of They're Western, all in so. fatigues, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, after a while, one of these civilians over behind the camera come over. He says, you, you know, boys, you're going to have to move your truck because we got to move those trailers and stuff for the next scene. And he said, uh, if, you, if you have to go, now is the time to do it because if you stay here, you're gonna be here for quite some time. So we decided to leave. And if I'd have known that the next thing was, was that barrel was gonna be rolled down and blow up that village and burn the whole place to the ground, I would have stayed, but it didn't. <laughs> that would have been worth the long, the long wait. I was there when that was That's blown right. up. That... The thing that amazes me out here with the Chinese villages, how did they get around all the cactus? All that was bare. There, you couldn't, where the village was, out in front of the village, there was none of this. It was completely bare. That's, that's all grown up since then. Yeah. And it, it looks like it's grown best where the fire was. <laughs> That's amazing, a great story. This is excellent. I mean, and you can definitely tell this is where it was from the oh, pictures yeah. you're sharing oh, with yeah. us. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It was great fun. So, Larry, this is part of the road in Mountain Road where you see them all leaving the village. Is that correct? Well, as the filming was going on, they were on both sides of the village just walking, uh -huh. just constantly walking. But this is part of the mountain part road of the, that they, that the they talk road. about. So, and the other was like in Fish Creek there. Fish Creek. Uh, hey, Larry, we are right here at the bridge that they used for the movie Mountain Road. They kind of spruced it up a little mm -hmm. bit, made it not so Americana-like right. for mm -hmm. it. And then when they blew it up, they used a model. Is that correct? Well, they used a whole different bridge. That but they, they, they did, they built the bridge right. and blew it up. Okay, but this is the one that you see in the film before they blow it up. Mm -hmm. And we are right down here at the bottom of uh, Fish Creek. And uh, you get a look here of the road where a lot of these, uh, the Chinese and uh, the army came down the road walking and driving in the movie. Mm -hmm. So uh, I encourage you to watch the movie and you'll be able to see all that. But uh, anyway, we're giving you a little perspective of Mountain Road, 1959. You know, it doesn't need to always be about Jacob Waltz and the curses of the Superstition Mountains. It can be about things like this, the mysteries of the movies that have been made here, parts of the mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.